Welcome everyone to another observability tips and tricks session. Today I have invited Johannes who has built the SonarCube extension for Dynatrace that is now also available on the Dynatrace hub. Um, thank you so much Johannes for being here. I would love to hear from you a, why you have built that integration, um, what you do with this integration with the data, and then also show us a little bit about how to configure it, because based on what you've told me already, it's amazing. It pulls in not only metrics and logs, it also integrates and pulls in STLC, Software Development Lifecycle Event, which is very important if you want to observe the quality of your software delivery lifecycle of artifacts. But yeah, without further ado, Johannes, uh, who are you? Why did you build it and walk us through it? Hey, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I'm Johannes. I'm a product security engineer and work in Dynatrace, of course. And I'm from the quality security and privacy capability. And we are currently driving initiatives in internally to improve the quality of our products or make it visible. And one step in that direction was to get SonarCube specific data into Grail to make it available to all the tools and all the processes that we run internally. And because the product did not support that yet, or there was no extension available, we decided to build our own custom extension. Um, we had two months for that, and I'm showing you now what we got out of it. <laughs> and the extension is now available in Hub Console. You can add it to environment and then configure it. You've seen already the two images by Andy recently. And with this extension, you're able to pull in one tenant data or multiple tenants data. It offers then, when it is available on the tenant, multiple opportunities for use cases like dashboarding. Here I show you an internal prototype of how you could fetch the data and make it visible. I've configured several SonarCube tenants and each tenant may have multiple projects. You can go through the scans, select and also visualize the scans that happened within a selected time frame. So in this case, seven days and get a quick overview of your product's health or maintainability scores like lines of code, maintainability score, security score, reliability score, or hotspots reviewed. What I like most about this particular dashboard is you can get a historic view. So you might see or can observe how develop, how the software or maybe a tenant's artifacts quality develop over time. So how hotspots develop over time, vulnerabilities develop over time, or how code application is developing over time, may giving our architects the opportunity to make large scale decisions because you could select all the projects and observe that code application is rising and then you can steer against it. I think especially very important now based on the uh, new trend that a lot of code gets AI generated. And I think sometimes we don't even know anymore what code gets generated and where the AI gets it from. Things like code duplication, I think, becomes uh, gets into the focus again. Huh? Will become very important. There will be a lot of duplicated code, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And how can you get an overview of that? Uh, yeah. As a product architect, or even as a senior engineer, you can't look at each and every thing and every service that you develop. So getting all the data into single place and making it visible may really be helpful. Mm -hmm. And True. as you also mentioned earlier, this data is in Grail. That means you can use everything in Grail. You can get alerts, you can use it uh, in your automated uh, quality gating. So you can use this folks with uh, anything that you're currently using with Dynatrace, right? Get alerted in case all of a sudden your code quality goes into the wrong direction or use this data also as part of a quality gate with the site reliability guardian. Yeah, cool. As part of the extension, we also deliver links to two dashboards that additionally help visualize what SonarCube is ingesting. Both of them exist already, but a new product has been added, the SonarCube mm -hmm. product. And you can get a quick overview of all the vulnerability findings, how many findings were ingested, 
and other important information. For example, also the top 10 vulnerabilities by risk and number of affected mm -hmm. projects. In addition, again, another dashboard that is already available, the security product coverage, and the SonarCube project has been added. You can again observe the ingested finding events, but over time, total finding events, reporting products, etc. So really helpful information and they are already available. So I've see, showed you a lot of information and a lot of overviews, but now how do we really get it into Dynatrace? Mm -hmm. And that's a possible via configurations. So you install the SonarCube extension as soon as it has been added in Hub Console to the environment. And when it is available, and the current version is 1.09, you can add a configuration. You select an active gate group. For us, it is an internal active gate group. And Andy mentioned it before, you can choose from several different uh, events that you may fetch and ingest. By default, all of them are uh, ticked uh, on or made available. Mm -hmm. And these are vulnerability findings and scan events, SDLC events, metrics, and in this case, all the metrics, but a selected few for now that SonarCube offers. And among these are hotspots, findings, um, ratings, general information about product or artifact health. And you may also fetch audit logs. In this case, the SonarCube internal audit logs and ingest it into Dynatrace and make it available. I've mentioned previously that you can configure the SonarCube base UL, so one specific tenant. If you want to have multiple tenants reporting to Dynatrace, you set up multiple configurations. Then a SonarCube API token that you can request in the SonarCube UI. And Dynatrace specific configuration, the access token that will allow you to bring all this data to Dynatrace via the access token app um, available on the self tenant or self monitoring te or your on hosted your tenant, tenant yeah. mm -hmm. and your tenant, in our case, the self hosted tenant. Um, and then you can decide either that or you decide to get it from a vault and you can add the credential path of your vault here. You may also override the default ingest endpoints. In our case, the highlighted endpoints are the default, but you might change it. Mm -hmm. the, the defaults are usually correct uh, because we want to report to the same tenant we configure the extension on. Mm -hmm. But when you override it, you could configure a completely different path, so a different tenant too. So if you have multiple then address tenants, you can also ingest it into another tenant. And now I just add some test data to get to the next page. This is generic SonarCube extension configuration. In our case, we named it according to the tenant. So we said SonarCube. In, in this case, I just call it SonarCube. But afterwards, you get a nice overview of all the installed mm -hmm. configurations. And if you have several tenants, it is maybe useful to add a very descriptive name or the URL that you used because um, that's usually what you configure within mm -hmm. the configuration. And then you can save it and it is available on your tenant. And it starts ingesting all this nice data that you've seen on the dashboard. Cool. It is super, super simple done. I mean, um, and also, again, I know I mentioned this before, what I really liked is that you are, besides ingesting the metrics and the logs that you're also ingesting SDLC events, so software development, lifecycle events. Folks, if you have seen some of the videos before, we talk a lot about making the lifecycle of artifacts visible, where you can then report on how many artifacts are you pushing through the pipelines, how many, uh, how long does it take. In this case now, you could be interested in how many have been scanned. Is there any changes in, in scanning trends? Uh, scanning trends, right? Um, you can also trigger workflows. So whenever a uh, scan is finished and Dynatrace ingests that SDLC event or the extension ingests it, 
you can trigger a workflow that then does additional checks to the Guardian and then sends you a result back to your Slack channel, to your MS Teams or opens up a ticket in case something is wrong. Really cool. Johannes, uh, thank you so much for walking us through this. Thank you so much, A, for showing us that um, you have built this extension internally at Dynatrace and then you brought it to our extension team. So now it is also available for everyone out there in the hub. I do hope you come up with more use cases in the future and you help extending Dynatrace even with more cool things and then come back to uh, the YouTube channel here and uh, show us what else is possible. Thank you for inviting me and uh, thanks to the extensions team for helping me. Uh, yeah. A big shout out to, to, my, yeah, to Mike Lundstrom yeah. and his team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.